Hey there, everybody, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Rama, and in today's video, we are going to be doing the Kaioparico Heist. I have performed the Kaioparico Heist many times on the channel in the past, and I'll be doing it once again. I feel like it's always good to make constant new videos every couple months to showcase the fastest ways to complete this heist, especially because Rockstar has nerfed the way that you can fast travel on PC. So, as we can take a look on the map. The game wants me to go all the way over to Grapeseed. So what we're going to start off by doing is hopping on to our submarine seat and we're going to click on the option that says fast travel. Then we're just going to scroll until we get to Grapeseed, which is San Chianski mountain range. And boom, $2,000 later, we are going to fast travel right over there. You'll notice in the bottom right corner of the screen, I have a stopwatch set up and that stopwatch is going to be going throughout the entire video so even if i make cuts through the video the stopwatch is on the recording there's no way to cut it out because of that you can obviously see exactly how long it's going to take me from start to finish to do all the setups and the Cayo Perico heist. We're going to add up how much money I was able to make, and then we're going to throw that into, uh, you know, comparing it to other businesses in the game. So what we're going to do after making our way over to Grapeseed is get into the back of our submarine and hop out in our Sparrow. The Sparrow is by far one of the most useful tools you will ever use in the game. It is an incredibly fast helicopter, it has missiles, and and it's very easy to spawn in wherever you are. And because of this, it just makes completing these missions so dang nice. Now, I will say the grape seed spawn location is pretty mediocre. I don't think it's as bad as the spawn location that you'll get all the way in Polito Bay. But it's definitely one of the worst. I would say by far, Zancudo is what you want to get. It's unfortunate there's not one closer than uh, Zancudo. But either way, we are going to take our helicopter and fly it right over to grape seed. We're almost there as it is, so... It's only a little bit more flying, and then we got to kill these guys. Come over here! Alright, now this is pretty easy. Usually what I suggest is blow up the car first, like that. Then you can shoot one more missile at these guys on the ground. As long as you don't get too close to the helicopter, you'll be fine. If your missiles actually hit the helicopter, or not the helicopter, the plane. If your missiles hit the plane, they can damage it, which might cause it to, uh, to die a little bit through. So we're just going to shoot this guy, there you go, and just like that we have killed every single guard here. It's literally that easy. So now, after killing all the guards, we are going to make our way over to Cayo Perico. 18 years of flying later, we have finally made it to Cayo Perico with about 6 minutes on the clock. So not too bad, normally I try to get there in around 5 minutes, but obviously it depends on where you spawn. If you get Zancudo, it's going to be way faster than obviously getting an area like Grapeseed or Polito Bay. So now we have to make our way over to the communications tower. To do this, it's fairly easy. You're going to take this motorcycle that is spawned right in front of you. And with this motorcycle, you just got to do a couple simple tricks and you'll be right there in no problem. So starting off, we are going to turn right into this off-road area here. I always recommend to do this as it just cuts off all the guards you'll have to deal with on your way there. We can see that there's really nothing in our way. Just make sure you don't drive into the water, but that's all you really got to worry about. Anything else is going to be a cakewalk. So let's keep going. Drive around this little cliff here. Try not to go on the water. And all right, there you go. So that was pretty dang easy. Nice. Now you just got to drive through this gate here. Then after making your way through the gate, you're going to roll to the other side of this road, get through this other gate, and you are now officially at the only part that's going to be a little challenging. So what I usually like to do is, first of all, cut through the woods here. And then once you've cut through this side, you're going to go around over to this area. You're going to take the motorcycle and just use a bit of speed and drive right over the wall. There you go. You've now made it past the tricky part. It's literally just that simple. Now we just have to drive our motorcycle over to the location, uh, which is the comms tower. So we just got to be a little careful. Obviously, don't want to drive in front of any cameras. Want to make sure that uh, no vehicle is in our way. That's fairly easy to do. This camera in front of us here is also very easy to avoid. Just go around it like this and then squeeze through here. There you go. I was a little worried it saw me for half a second there, but nah, we're all good. All right, well, there you go. Eight minutes on the clock, and we've already made it to the communications tower. Now all we have to do is hope that the box is on the first level. I think it is. It should be. Yes. All right, nice. Uh, that's pretty lucky, because usually it's not here. So now we just got to hack the signal box, and we are already uh, ready to make our money. 112. All right, well, we're going to put the 60 there. We're going to do the 6 here. 
And then we're gonna do the two here. Boom, 112, done. All right, that was pretty easy. Now we are inside of the communications tower. After making your way into the comms tower, you're gonna make your way up to the Sightseer app, and you're gonna scroll until you make your way to two different areas. The first thing you're going to do is the basement level and look at what is inside the vault. Hopefully it is the pink diamond, but I guess we're gonna find out. We have, yes, there you go. I actually haven't got that in a while. Then the second spot you're going to scroll to is the office cameras because we want to see if there's paintings inside the office. We can see if there's a painting on this side. Now we want to check if there's a painting on the other side. If there is, it's going to make life... Oh, yes. All right. Life is way easier now that we have two paintings in inside of the office. So all I have to do is make my way out. So we're going to go to online. Make sure that your spawn location when doing this is set to the Kosatka. Because what we're doing after completing all of that is just leaving. We've finished the scope mission. You don't need to take the plane back. That's one thing that a lot of people waste their time on. We are just going to TP right inside of the Kosatka. And that first mission is done. So within 10 minutes, we've already done our scope. And we already know exactly what we're going to grab, which is the two paintings. Even if you don't have two paintings, I still always recommend to leave. Because you know where the main loot's going to spawn. I usually just go to the airfield. It's going to take me two minutes extra. And boom, we're done. So after finishing the Gather Intel mission, we need to do all of the setups. There shouldn't be too many setups here. We have to do Approach Vehicle starting off. We're going to make our way over to the Long Fin. We have to head to the La Mesa Police Station. Now, as you'll notice, we are already inside of uh, Los Santos. And that is just because of the fact that Cayo Perico is near Los Santos when you fly there. So wherever you last are is where your sub's going to usually be. Because of that, you don't need to really fast travel at all. You just spawn inside your sub, you get out your sparrow, and fly over to the location. Making our way to the La Mesa police station, we have two different ways we can steal this trailer. The first way is stealing a wedge or some sort of truck that the game's going to give us. So you'll notice on the map, for example, down here, there is a hauler or a phantom that the game wants us to steal. We are not going to worry about that. We're going to go to manage vehicles and we're going to scroll until we see a phantom wedge. Now, to be honest, we shouldn't have cops. I don't know why they're mad at us. We didn't even go near them, but... All right, either way, we'll just kill these cops. Shouldn't be too much of an issue. There you go. There you go. All right, we are going to hop in our personal Phantom Wedge. Buying a Phantom Wedge, if you plan on doing this heist over and over, is definitely a good decision. I would highly recommend to do that. No clue where snacks are under here. I must be stupid. Maybe it's health and ammo. There you go. They changed the way the interaction menu works, and because that, it's a little more challenging to figure out where everything is. That's all right. Here we go. Just got to reverse our truck inside of here. We are in a phantom wedge, so it doesn't really matter if the police cars drive into us at all. We just need to back up over here. Just drive into all these guys. There you go. Move out of my way. Thank you very much. And steal the trailer. Oh, we missed it. All right. Let me just run into these guys really quick so they don't kill me. All right. Try it again. Get that thing out of my way. Come on. Let me get the trailer game. This is definitely taking a bit more time than I want it to. Let's eat some snacks really quick so we don't die. There you go. Finally got the trailer. It took a little bit longer than I wanted, but that's fine. We still have completed our goal. We got the long fin. So now after stealing the long fin, what we're going to do is drive a little bit. Make sure you're not near any bridges because the game is going to spawn you on one of those bridges pretty far away from where you are. So for example, we are currently in a pretty good location. So what we're going to do is we're going to hop outside of our truck. We're going to pull out a sticky bomb. We're going to run a little bit away. Throw the sticky bomb, blow it up immediately, and boom, now we're dead. The reason you want to do that is because killing yourself is going to lose the cops. So as we can see, it's going to spawn me a little bit away from our long fin. All we have to do is run inside the truck and deliver it to the location now without having to worry about the cops. Obviously, something I should mention now is that you do want to have a decent chunk of snacks when you do any of these missions because it's always good to have a little bit of a backup just in case you mess up. Like... That cop car was obviously blocking the trailer from getting parked in. And because we had snacks, we were able to not die. As I said, I was just a little confused on where they were because Rockstar hadn't ended up changing the interaction menu just about a couple weeks ago. After making our way over to the docks and dropping off the long fin, all we have to do is wait for the cutscene and we are able to go back inside of our Kosatka teleporting into a new lobby. So as we can see, it's going to say mission complete. So now we just go to online, find new session invite only. And because my spawn location is still set in the Kosatka, you can see it's just going to spawn me right inside the sub. Still inside of Los Santos, 
and boom. That is a way faster way to travel inside the sub than calling out a sparrow or any type of vehicle to then make your way over here. So there you go. We have already completed our first prep, and it only took us about four minutes, which is pretty dang fast, everything considered. So now we move on to the next prep, which I'm not exactly sure which one we're going to do. How about we try Weapon Loadout? This one's always a pain. I personally like Crack Shot. What we want to do is not Merryweather HQs. You'll notice how it said Merryweather. That's fine. All we're going to do is a load into a new invite-only lobby. That is the easiest way to skip the mission. There's people that are like, oh, you blow up the helicopter. Why, though? Why would you blow up the helicopter when you can literally just load into a new lobby, which is way faster, and then literally just do it again? So now we're just going to make our way upstairs, and uh, we should be able to this time hopefully not get Merryweather. You might keep getting Merryweather. It might take you like four or five attempts of doing this, but trust me, it is way, way faster than getting the Merryweather mission. That one absolutely sucks. Let's try again. Prep, weapon loadout. We go over to crack shot. Boom, Merryweather HQ. Third time's the charm. Maybe, but just maybe, we won't get Merryweather. Here we go, crack shot, and there you have it. So, took me three attempts, probably about a minute and a half of redoing it. But that's fine, because now we have to go to the Schlongberg Sack Center. And this is going to be a very, very quick trip. You can still see that our submarine is chilling right in the city, so it's a very, very quick flight over to this area we're going to go. Now, one big bit of advice I can give when making your way over to one of these locations is to request your coast Sotka at a different spawn area, which we'll do in just a moment. For any weapons loadout mission, you should always strive to use a helicopter. And that is because you can enter the roof of the building instead of going through the downstairs. You don't have to deal with any guards when entering the roof. All you want to do is make sure that your helicopter is in an easy location to get into the air. So as you can see, I'm personally going to land my helicopter right here. And that's very, very solid. So now, all we need to do is hop into that helicopter on our way out, and we're done. So let's get inside of this office building here. Usually, there's two different ways you can deal with the people inside the office building. The first way is pulling out the stone hatchet. This is going to give you infinite health, and you don't really need to worry about anybody. But that's what we're going to do right here. So with the stone hatchet, we just run up to this guy. Boom. After we get the kill, you can see we have the stone hatchet ability. So now we can just kind of kill everyone here. We don't need to worry about dying at all. You can see we kill those two guys there. Kill this guy here. Then we can pull out our gun and kill the rest. And just like that, they're all basically dead. We don't need to worry about any of them. There's one guy in the back there, but not anymore. There you go. So now we just got to find the office safe, which we already have. Open the gun locker. It's locked, so we're going to have to hack the computer. After hacking the computer, you're going to collect the weapons and leave. Now, I don't obviously want to deal with... Uh, oh, what am I? where am I going? Okay, there you go. Yeah, I'm going to take a shower. Don't worry about me, guys. Make sure when you leave the building, you exit through the roof and not the bottom, because if you misclick there, that will be a bit of a pain. Put on some snacks, put on some armor before you do leave, because there is going to be a helicopter after you above. And that helicopter is always going to be rather annoying. So we're just going to get inside of our Sparrow. Here we go. And boom, there you go. We have completed the mission. Now you heard earlier that I was talking about changing your Kosatka spawn location. So if you go to Service Vehicles, Kosatka, and you press Request Kosatka, it's going to spawn it again wherever you are to the nearest location. So as you can see, instead of our Kosatka being all the way near the Merryweather docks, it is in Vespucci. So now all we have to do is fly right over to Vespucci, and our Kosatka is going to be here, which is way, way faster in terms of location and flying time. So just a little tip there, which will indeed save you some overall useful time. So let's go down a little bit towards the water. We gotta wait for our Kosatka to rise out, which you're gonna see right here. The nice thing about the Sparrow is you can just fly right over the back of the sub, spam the enter button, and there you go. We are now inside. These missions, any of the missions where you have to actually grab a physical object and bring it back, you are not able to fast travel because it's not going to keep the object on you. So you're actually going to have to fly back to the location to complete the mission. So just a little over 20 minutes, and we have been able to complete two of our preps. And these are obviously the longest preps of the bunch. These other ones are quite easy. The first one we are going to do is the plasma cutter. So we're going to have to head over to the safe house. Making your way to the first safe house, all you need to do is take a picture of the wall in front of you. So as we can see, there's a board where we can just go onto our phone very briefly, zoom into the wall, although that might be an awful spot to take the... Oh, no, we can still send it. Apparently that post doesn't exist. So there you go. We already just took a picture of the photograph or whatever, and now we, uh, now we leave. That's how easy it is to skip that first little part. 
Now, we're going to make our way back inside of the Sparrow, and we're going to fly and wait for Pavel to give us the next location, which we can see on the map. So we have to go over to Del Perro. Again, this is why it's always important to have your Kosatka near the shore, especially in Vespucci, because of the fact that we can literally go over to any of these spawn locations, and they'll be right next to your Kosatka. When it comes to completing this mission, usually what I like to do is land my Sparrow facing away from wherever we're going to be. Then I'm going to go into Manage Vehicles. I'm going to call out my Vapid Speedo Custom. Now, if you don't have a, a Speedo Custom, it doesn't matter too much. I just personally really like this vehicle because it's very easy to use. It has a minigun on the roof that we can kill any guards with, and uh, it's a fairly well-armored vehicle, so nothing's really going to be a huge problem. So all we're going to do now is reverse our Vapid Speedo Custom right over to where these guys are. We're going to hopefully kill all of them very, very quickly, just like so. There you have it. Blow up that van, get rid of this vehicle here. Then you can see they're going to spawn some guards on us, but that doesn't really matter. We can just kill that guy right there. Kill this guy right here. There you go. We just killed all the guards. That literally took like half a second. They're all dead. Now we just got to get rid of these guys over here. As we can see, there's some more people in the wall. Okay, there you go. And done. Okay. So now as we can see, it's going to spawn more guys on me. Now we're just going to eat some snacks very briefly. And we're going to pull out our explosive shotgun. Goodbye. You're all gone. However, it looks like my Sparrow is not doing all too well. So I'm going to have to call out my Oppressor Mark II. Actually, no, that's fine. We don't need to call out our Oppressor. I'll just call out the Buzzard, which we can see spawned right in front of me here. We're just going to hop on our Buzzard very, very quickly. Go to uh, health and ammo really quick. Eat some snacks so we don't die. That's the nice thing if you do end up blowing up your Sparrow and you do end up owning a Buzzard or some other flying vehicle. You can always call one of those things out as well. And we can already see our Kosatka in the distance. So we're going to head right over there. If you do happen to end up not using your Sparrow or you're uh, blowing it up like I did there, pretty easy. Just land your helicopter right on the front of the sub. It's probably going to sink when you enter the sub, but that's fine. Because all we need to do is enter the front hatch and we can use our Sparrow again, which is already respawned inside. So there you go. Heist prep complete. Plasma cutter delivered. We're at 25 minutes now. You can see just how quick you can complete all these preps. Now we're going to do the next equipment, which is the fingerprint cloner. This one is even faster than the previous safe house one. I'd actually say the safe house prep is kind of annoying. I also always go the wrong way. I always, I always go to the back of the ship instead of the, uh, the, where the sparrow is. When making your way over to the warehouse, you will notice that there are security cameras. Now, some of the buildings, the security cameras are going to be really easy to disable. We can see, for example, this one, you just head right over here and you can disable the cameras. It's pretty easy to do. However, I personally don't even care. You're going to see me just run right in here and I'm just going to kill all the guards. It takes like half a second. You just blow them up. There you go. All the guards are dead. I mean, it's it's that simple. However, I just accidentally walked back outside because for some reason that's a thing. It doesn't really matter anyway. You have to wait for Pavel to stop speaking his long monologue to you about uh, finding the computer anyway. So there you go. All the guards are dead. We gotta wait for Pavel to stop speaking to us and then we're able to hack the computer. Hacking the laptop is obviously incredibly easy. This is like the easiest hack in the game, but I like it because it is so easy. So there you go. We've completed the first hack. Now we have located the archive. So we're going to leave this little storage unit here. We're going to head into our Sparrow. And now we have to fly over to the next location. Now, even if you get the guards mad at you here, nobody's going to spawn on you, which is kind of funny, and you won't even get cops. So you just need to go over to the archive. And this time, oh, well, I didn't mean to do that, but should be fine. Our Sparrow is not going to die within the next minute anyway. So when making your way over to this archive, you do actually want to get rid of the camera here. Mainly down to the fact because if you don't, guards will spawn on you if you get them mad. The fingerprint cloner will almost always be located. The fingerprint cloner will always be located at this back little desk here. You just need to run around. There you go. It's on the desk and boom, we've grabbed it. Now we just have to make our way back over to the Kosatka once again. Oh my god, our Sparrow almost did not make the trip, but we finally got there, 30 minutes just about on the dot, and we've completed the third prep. That means we only have one to go, which is the Cutting Torch, and this is always the easiest prep by far. Depending on which construction site you're taking the Cutting Torch from, it can change your approach a little bit. However, the one we're at is a pretty easy one. I've got this little balcony here that we're able to land our helicopter on. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'm going to land the helicopter directly facing outwards. So when we leave, we can just hop right in. 
I'm gonna leave the door open. Now you'll notice there's a hard hat right in front of us, so we're just gonna walk up to this. I'm gonna wait for the uh, text prompts to go away. I guess we have to walk away and come back to the hard hat very, very quickly. I usually recommend to put on the hard hat just because sometimes you will get like a weird spawn location of the cutting torch and you won't find it. So because of that, it's usually smarter and better safe than sorry. So we've checked the first area. Don't see the cutting torch there. Check the second area. Don't see it there. Let's keep on going, keep on going. There we go. Finally, we have found the cutting torch. Now we just gotta take it because we're wearing the hard hat. They won't suspect a thing. So we just have to leave with our sparrow and we have completed every single setup. So literally, that's it. 32 minutes from start to finish and we've been able to do every single setup for the heist. And that's it. Now we just gotta do the heist. And delivered. We are ready to do the heist. So let's make our way all the way to the front of the sub. And let's get this started. I'm actually really, really excited. I haven't done the Kayaprika heist in a while, and I'm excited to see how fast we actually are able to do everything here. So, as usual, always buy super heavy armor. You might not need it, but it's still a good idea. Now we're going to start it up. We got to choose all of our areas. We're going to do North Dock, Infiltration Point, Drainage Tunnel. Uh, it doesn't really matter where you escape. doesn't matter what time of day you set. Uh, putting suppressors on your weapons also doesn't matter because the game automatically does it. So we've already done all of our settings. Shouldn't really take you too long to mess with them. And we get to do the heist. Should take you on average about 8 to 12 minutes to do the heist depending on what targets you get. It's only about 8 minutes if you have what I have. Actually, it might even be less than 8 minutes. Literally, all I have to do is enter, steal the diamond, go into his office, take the, the main targets there, and we're done. So this is going to be really, really easy. Not sure why our boat went this far up, so I guess we're going to have to reverse a little bit. Give me a second. All right, we've made it to the grate. This part's always really, really easy. You just got to cut it off, so I'm not even going to bother showing it. And done. Now we just have to make our way through the drainage system and steal his diamond. I mean... I don't know, this heist is always a little too easy. I think that's the reason why Rockstar keeps nerfing it, is they realized, huh, maybe making a heist that only takes like five minutes from start to finish to complete is a little stupid. So all we have to do at this point is follow my current pathing. Just run straight ahead, then we take a little turn here, then we keep running, we climb over this, wait for this guard to turn away for a second, which only takes literally like five seconds. There you go. He's... Ah, yes, that's how guards walk. I forgot. Either way, just run past that guard. Make sure that you pull out your pistol up here. Try not to shoot this guard unless you have to. Usually I just try to whack him in the head, so he's gonna pop over here. There you go, boom. Whacked in the head, done. We have the gate keys, but we don't really care about the gate keys. All we're up here for are two things. First of all, we're gonna open the safe and grab some money. Should be pretty easy. And there you go, $78,000. Now we are going to steal the two paintings inside the office, which is going to be very quick. There you go, one cut, two cuts, three cuts, and four cuts. I don't know how much these are worth, but hopefully a decent amount. I don't think Rockstar nerfed the painting payout, so it actually should be pretty good. There you go, yeah, $250,000 for that one. Then we're gonna come over here, take this painting off the wall. And then after we take the two paintings, all we have to do is take the diamond and we're literally done with the heist. It's that simple. So there we go. Thank you very much. That should be what, $400,000 or so? Yeah, $420,000. So let's just do the fingerprint hack, make our way downstairs. And all hacks have been completed in about 35 seconds. So very, very easy to do. After all of this, we're heading downstairs. It really is sad how quick we're able to do this. We're at 39 minutes on the clock right now, and we are already inside of El Rubio's mansion. So here we go, cutting into the diamond. I always recommend to uh, get the cutting torch. Never ever use the demo charges, because the moment you use them, you're going to be alerted by every single guard around you. It's just not worth it. When cutting through here, usually what I recommend is just wait for it to cool down a lot, and then just full gas it, and then wait for it to cool down then full gas it again. And then on the last one, you only have to do about halfway and it should cut through a little bit more. There you go, done. There you have it, we have the diamond. So we have a $1.4 million take there, plus the diamond is $1.7 million. Now we have to make our way back upstairs. Even though we do have the uh, gates, keys, it's just not worth it. So now we just leave. And leaving is the easiest part in my opinion. We're just gonna run all the way around here and keep going and keep going you're gonna notice that the juggernaut's in front of us but that's fine because the juggernaut's going to turn and go down the stairwell 
So once he turns, we're just going to run past him. We're going to go upstairs here. We're going to ignore all of that. We're going to run right past all the guards. And congratulations, we have completed the heist. We're out of the compound. We have $1.7 million of target in our bag right now. Plus, we're going to get an additional chunk of money for completing this heist on normal mode. Unfortunately, we don't have it on hard mode, but that's just because of the fact I don't really do it as much. As I said, I haven't really done the Cayo Frico heist in a solid... I don't know, maybe month or so, because I don't really have a reason to do the heist. I've got so much money that it really doesn't matter. So we're just going to kill that guard right there. That's the only guard you need to kill because we already have all of our secondary targets. I always recommend to get your secondary targets first. Getting them on the way out is usually much more painful. So now at this point, we just jump off the cliff over here and we swim. When leaving the island, just make sure you swim down this little route here. It's right off the area we just jumped off of, as you can see. And swimming down here, you're going to see elephant bones or something down here. I mean, it really doesn't matter. You just follow this little path. Within the next 10 or so seconds, the game's going to remove all of our UI, and we'll be done with the heist. There you go. So the UI's done. We've completed the heist. 41 minutes and 40 seconds. And we have literally done every single setup, everything, start from finished, in the Cayo Preco heist. There are people that try saying the Dr. Dre agency contract is better, and that is just wrong. It is so much faster to do the Cayo Preco heist. There you go, heist passed. I mean, that is kind of insane how fast we were actually able to complete it. Let's take a look at our take. We got $1.51 million, plus we also completed the Elite Challenge. We were able to complete the heist very fast, so we're gonna get an additional $50,000. This was a $1.56 million take in 40 minutes. That is insane. And that's without even adding in all of our passive businesses we have running in the background. Easily, you can get your hands upwards of two to $2.5 million an hour completing the Cayo Preco heist and doing back-to-back -back methods if you do it properly. If you just know how to complete it fast. I didn't even really speed run. This was just a normal run through. I very easily could have done this heist even faster. How long did it take me? Six minutes and 40 seconds to complete uh, the Cayo Preco heist there alone. So yeah, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Hopefully you enjoyed today's video and hopefully you learned a thing or two. I always post this, as I said, just in case there are beginners out there that don't know exactly how to complete this heist as fast as possible. Or there's people out there that just don't know the most optimal ways to complete things. This video should help you out. I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.